Hi everybody, my name is Justin Stoney and I'm the founder of New York Vocal Coaching here in New York City. Welcome to episode 77 of Voice Lessons to the World, the show where we want to help you as singers by answering your questions from all over the world and I'll give you a chance to ask questions later. But our question for this week comes from Sergey M. in Merman's Russia and Sergey writes, Dear Justin, what is vocal twang? I've heard it can really help my singing but I don't know what it is. That's an awesome question, Sergey, because you're right about twang. It's a topic that we hear about a lot, and yes, it really can help. So we're gonna to talk today about what is it, how it can help us, and we're even gonna do a vocal exercise to develop twang in our voices. So let's start off the day by answering that question, what is twang? Twang refers to the bright qualities that result from narrowing the aryepiglottic sphincter. Whoa. Now, what the heck does that mean? Well, when we sing or speak, we have the ability to bring out the brightness or darkness of our voice. And most great voices have a good combination of brightness and darkness. What's bright and dark? Well, there's the note that we're singing or speaking, and then there's overtones above that note. And if we emphasize the higher overtones, it sounds brighter. If we emphasize the lower overtones, it sounds darker. Now there's lots of different ways to control the brightness or darkness of the voice. We've talked about some of them in the past. If we sing with a higher larynx, it's going to sound brighter. Also by widening the embouchure or spreading, that will also make it sound brighter. Lifting the tongue root, like in an E vowel is another thing to make it sound brighter. And then lowering the soft palate using nasal resonance is another element related to brightness. It doesn't have to, but it's a part of our brightness. But the aryepiglottic sphincter is different. This is something inside your larynx, at the top of your larynx. And when it narrows, it causes the chamber to be smaller. Think about it this way. A big old tuba makes a deep, rich sound, but a piccolo makes a high, tinny, bright sound. That has to do with the size of the instrument. When we narrow the larynx with the aryepiglottic folds, we're creating a little chamber that causes brighter qualities to pop out of our voice. The easiest way to find it is first by doing some character voices. So we're gonna look at the speaking voice and some common twang characters. It's super important that you find twang in your speaking voice before you find it in your singing voice. Because if you can do it with your speech, it becomes very easy to translate to your singing. However, if you can't do it in your speech, it's rather difficult to apply to your singing. And the best way to do it is to find some very silly twang characters that you can try. You can try these or some others that you might have fun inventing on your own. But one twang character might be a duck. Quack, quack. Or perhaps a bratty character. Hey, give that back. You better give that back, that's mine. Or you might try an auctioneer. 25, 25, do I hear 25? 25 of that man over there. 30, 30, do I hear 30? 30 of that woman in the back. 40, 40, anybody? 40, 40, sold to Sergey M. in Merman's Russia. Or you might do a robot character. Hello, my name is Justin Stoney, and I'm the founder of New York Vocal Coaching here in New York City. Don't lose that joy. Don't lose that passion. Don't let people tell you you can't sing. You and I both know that's just not true. Or maybe the best one would be a nerd character. Um, well, I just thought that maybe we would uh, uh, have a voice lesson, and then uh, after that we could uh, go get our uh, allergy shots or maybe see uh, a, a movie. I mean, whichever one y you might think would be uh, uh, better uh, to do. So you can try these twang characters and find it in your speaking voice, and then we're going to translate it over to the singing voice, which is what we'll do next. Moving over into the singing, we've got a country or bluegrass kind of sound. I've got my soulmate to help me with this. This is You Are My Sunshine. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take that sunshine away. Now, 
in a sound like that, twang is very dominant, present throughout all of the sound making. And it's appropriate for a bluegrass or country sound, but what about a legit or classical voice? If I take Maria from West Side Story. Maria, I just met a girl named Maria. That's fine, but what if I'd like more brilliance in the sound? Maria, I just met a girl named Maria. And by adding elements, percentages of twang to the legit singing, it actually adds more vibrancy to the tone. Only percentages, but still, it makes a difference. What about a pop rock belt sort of sound? We can take Titanium by Sia. You know this one. You shout it out, but I can't hear the words you say. Now in the chorus here, it's going to want to go to falsetto if you're a guy, or head voice if you're a female. I am titanium. It's going to want to be a little bit too thin for a belt. Here's where we can take a twang exercise like what we're going to do later and start to build some chord closure to the upper notes. So if I take Nan, for example. Nan, 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 nan. I start to find that edge, that chord closure within the twang. Then I go back over into my song. I am titanium. And then all of a sudden, I can start to get that belt happening up on upper notes. So we can see that twang has all kinds of uses for our singing voice. And we're going to talk next about the benefits of twang. All kinds of benefits to using twang. The brightness. We're doing a lot of extreme sounds today, but being able to back off those extremes to find percentages of brightness. Then, brightness independent of other factors. I don't want to have to spread to be bright. I don't want to have to crank the larynx sky high to be bright. I don't even want to have to use nasal resonance to be bright. Nope, those things are different. Nasal resonance mm, is different than the brightness that we sometimes call nasality. That's what you can find in episode two of the show. Twang is different than nasal resonance. We can do them together or we can do them separately, and it's cool to have that control. Also, it helps with our mix, our chord closure. Staying connected higher is easier to do with twang. Also, the voice carries and projects. The upper overtones cut, and we can have a louder voice without pushing the volume. These are all the benefits of twang, so I think we need to try it. Let's do an exercise. This is gonna be Nan, N-A-A-N, -A -A Nan, on a one, three, five, eight, 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 five, three, one. With this one, we're gonna have guys and ladies on the same pitch, not up and down the octave, but the same pitch. So we're gonna be starting too low for most ladies and going too high for most guys. It's okay to flip to falsetto, it's okay to flip to head voice, but if you can, stay in a mix. It's not gonna to be too loud, we're just gonna keep it really bad sounding, really twangy. That's really the purpose of this exercise. So here we go with guys and ladies, if you can, on Nan. Nan, 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 nan. Here we go. Nice. And some ladies. Nan, 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 nan. Right, twang it up. Yes. Keep it bad. That's right. That's right, nasty. Last one. Coming back down.
great stuff. Keep going. Maybe some ladies too. A few more. Last one. Fantastic work with those twanged up sounds. So it's been a great day finding out what twang is, how it can be used in the speaking voice, the singing voice, the benefits of it, and then you guys did just such a great job adding some of those qualities to your voice. And as you know, if you can do it in extremes, then we can take it away, balance it out with other things that's really gonna add new elements to your voice. So I hope that's been helpful for you guys today as singers. If you've got questions that you'd like to see us answer on the show, you can send an email to questions at voicelessonstotheworld.com. So I just encourage you, don't lose that joy. Don't lose that passion. Don't let people tell you you can't sing. You and I both know it's not true. Get with a great voice teacher in your area, or if you'd like to Skype with one of our staff, or you're in New York, you can visit www.newyorkvocalcoaching.com. You also might be interested in our Voice Lessons to the World vocal course. This is a 12-part vocal course with hundreds of vocal exercises. It's a good resource for you on your journey from beginning to master singer. To download the course, go to www.voicelessonstotheworld.com. Finally, if you'd like free vocal tips sent to your email every single day, you can sign up at www.dailyvocaltips.com fresh vocal tips delivered to you from your good old pals at New York Vocal Coaching every single day. I'm Justin Stoney. Until next time, make a joyful noise. Meow, 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 meow. But our question for this week comes from Daquan R. in Toronto, Canada. And Daquan writes, Dear Justin, I love your videos, but I wish you'd release a vocal course that I can do at home. Is there something like this in the works? Question for this week comes from Richard R. in Surrey, United Kingdom. And Richard writes, Dear Justin, I challenge you to give us a top 10 list of singing tips. Well, Richard, 